Hello and welcome to this video about series circuits. Um, you need to be able to recognise that series circuits are ones where all the components are in one loop. When I talk about components, I just mean like the cells and the lamps or diodes or resistors or whatever you have in your circuit, they are all in one loop. That is then opposed to the parallel circuits where you would see branches coming off with different components in different branches. So this one would be parallel and when they're just in one loop that would be in series and we say all the components are in series with each other. Now the only thing that you might see added to a series circuit like this might be a voltmeter and when you add a voltmeter on you have to add it in parallel like this and the way I remember it is you're measuring a difference, you're measuring the potential difference by um, putting the voltmeter on so you need to add it in parallel across two points. You need to know how to draw these in the exam. You also need to remember that the ammeter is always in series. The ammeter is what measures the current. That must be in series, so next to or in the same loop as the component, but the potential difference measured by the voltmeter must um, be technically in parallel to the component. So there's a few rules about the series circuit that we need to remember. Um, we need to have power in that circuit and these cells have to be in the right direction so you have to have the cells lined up like this. If you had multiple cells where you'll notice the circuit go wrong is when people put cells together a little bit like this. So look out for that in your exam, they have to go negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, etc. as opposed to the other way around. So a few rules then for series circuits. Um, the first one is that the current is the same everywhere. For example, if I said that the reading on this ammeter was 5 amps, over here we'd also have 5 amps and finally over here we'd also have 5 amps. Okay, so all in one loop there's the same rate of flow of electrons throughout that whole circuit. The second rule is in relation to potential difference and the potential difference is shared between the components. Now in this case, if we, if we suggested that this was a 3 volt cell, for example, the potential difference would be shared between these two lamps. So if we were to put a voltmeter on each of these lamps, because they are the same component, they would halve it, so they'd have 1.5 volts here and 1.5 volts there. Okay, so the potential difference is shared between the components, but the current is the same everywhere. And the way I try and remember it is if you've got a flow of electrons going around the circuit, then wherever you are in the circuit, you're going to have the same number of electrons flowing past at every point, and that's why the current's the same. And for ten potential difference, if you think about it, potential difference is the amount of energy transferred by the charge. So for to have both lamps lit up, you'd have to transfer some of the energy to the, across this lamp and then some of the energy across this lamp. If you transferred it all here, there would be no energy left to light up the second lamp. Also with series circuits, they're not particularly useful for a number of things. And that's because if you were to have a lamp broken, for example in this circuit, that would mean that the circuit was broken because you'd have a break in this loop and that lamp wouldn't be able to light up. So not very many um, uses of series circuits. They used to be used in Christmas tree lights and it's take you ages to find out which lamp had blown in the Christmas tree. Um, so most of what we have um, in our everyday life is wired in parallel. So remembering those two rules then, here are a few questions for you to have a go at. If you pause the video, have a go at them and then see if you got them correct. 
So question one, if the reading on ammeter one is three amps, what is the reading on ammeter two? So ammeter one here, if that's three amps, we need to remember that our rule that current is the same anywhere in the circuit. So ammeter two would also be three amps. Question two, the potential difference across the battery is nine volts. So in your exam, I recommend you write all over your circuit with the information that you got. What would the potential difference across the middle lamp be? So it says if we were to measure potential difference here, what would it be? So if nine volts is the potential difference across the battery, we remember that our rule for series circuit is that potential difference is shared between components. And because they're the same components, we can assume that they've got the same resistance. And that would mean that that nine volts would have to be shared three ways. So they would each have three volts of potential difference across each lamp. So the answer would be three volts. And finally, the middle lamp in the circuit smashes, this one here. What would the reading now be on ammeter two? Well, if the, the lamp smashes, the circuit is broken, so the reading on ammeter two would be naught amps because the current would not be able to flow. So hopefully you got all of those correct. Well done if you did. If you found this video useful, then please press the like button and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.